Assalamu alaikum. Uh, we all know the, who the next speaker will be, um, Imam Shoaib Webb. I'll just run a quick bio on him. Imam Shoaib Webb is an American Muslim imam, tough leader and educator. After his conversion to Islam, Imam Webb left a career in, in the music industry and pursued his passion in education. He enrolled in the University of Central Oklahoma, where he graduated with a bachelor degree in education. While pursuing his bachelor degree, Imam Webb studied privately with a renowned Muslim scholar of Senegalese descent. After intense private training in various Islamic science, Islam, Imam Webb was hired as an imam in the Islamic Society of Greater o Oklahoma City, where he not only provided khutbah sermon and religious classes, but also counseled families and young people. After serving as imam, Imam Webb decided to further his education and training young people. After serving as Imam, Imam Webb decided to further his education and training in Islamic law and various Islamic science. He enrolled in a world-renowned Islamic educational institution, Al-Azhar University, in the College of Sharia. There he also studied um, privately with leader, leading Islamic thinkers of Islam. After years of study in the Arabic language, he was appointed head of Engli English translation department of Dar al-Ifta al-Masharia, as a mufti Jewish, jurist. He completed his memorization of the Holy Quran there as well. Imam Webb strongly advocates for an authentic articulation of American Muslim identity. He is a proponent of understanding and various challenges, of various challenges facing the American Muslim community and finding solution based on an authentic American Muslim experience. I hereby invite Imam Shuaib Webb to the podium. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad, Sayyid al awali wa al-akhirin. Jalal al-afham wa anwar al-uyun. Allahumma salli wa barak alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alayhi alaykum wa rahmatu wa barakatuh. Um, it's great to see for once that Miami people actually stayed the whole four quarters. <laughs> and I might cramp up halfway through my talk and have to leave and go to Ohio. Whoa. I actually brought a Cavs jersey for Bossett, uh, LeBron Cavs jersey. He refuses to take it. Um, Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I'm from Boston, and we love to make fun of you. And that's why I started my speech that way. We like the Miami Heat It's about as much as we like an earthquake or something of that nature. And we're very happy right now. We're really, we're jubilant these days. Um, but we begin with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the merciful. We send peace and blessings upon uh, our beloved Prophet وسلم, and those who follow him until the end of time. Uh, I was a little bit confused about what I was supposed to talk about, so I'm going to talk about what I assumed, what I was supposed to talk about, and that was some of the common misconceptions about Islam. But I'm going to change it around a little because I think one of the biggest problems that we face is not that non-Muslims don't understand Islam, it's that Muslims don't understand Islam. That, in fact, is a fitna. And in the Quran, Allah said, وَلَا تَجِعَلْنَا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Don't make us as Muslims a trial for non-Muslims. And one of the interpretations of that verse in Surah Mumtahina is that by our ignorance and the, own diseases, in the, in the diseases in our heart, and our failure to understand Islam properly and practice it properly and misrepresent it to others, we will actually be a fitna to them because we will push them away from the truth in the name of the truth. So just imagine it's a double entendre. In the name of the truth, I actually push people away from it. And that's why the Prophet said, Bashiru wala tunafiru. You know, give good news to people and don't make them run away. The, another riwayah, which I read to my sheikh who's now in prison when we read Sahih al-Bukhari from beginning to end. Another riwayah mentioned in the Sahih al-Bukhari in the Makhtuta, which isn't found in the Suq, is that the Prophet said, Sakinu, which means tranquilize people, bring Sakina to people. 
and don't cause them to feel that they have to flee from the truth. So our failure to, to understand Islam properly has actually caused some of us to be so extreme and hard that in the name of the truth, as Sheikh Saheb was talking about, we push people actually away from the truth. Yani, نُبْعِدُهُمْ بِالْحَقْ بِسْمِ الْحَقْ You know, we, we push them away from the truth in the name of the truth. On the other end, we have an irresponsible liberalism that also waters down the religion to the point that a shatabi he talked about in the muwaffaqat leaves no vestige of the truth left. So as Sheikh Sahib, he quoted the verse, وَكَذَارِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا We have made you a moderate ummah. You know, that, those of us who are حُفَاف بِفَضِّ الله, when I memorized uh, Qur'an with a sheikh in, in, I was reviewing in Egypt, Sheikh Ahmed, when, when we read this verse together, he said to me, what is the ayah number of this verse? And I said, I don't know. He told me, I memorized the Qur'an by ayat. So you could say, you know, ayah 30, Sultan Ankabut, he could read it. Ayah 15, Sultan Kaf, he can read it. You know, the 15th verse, Sultan Kaf, bam. I was like, I just memorized the Qur'an, man. <laughs> I'm not like, you know, LeBron, right? I'm just like... I'm, you know, Bosch. Like, I'm not, I'm not there, right? I'm not, I didn't memorize the verse numbers, too. I just memorized the verse. I know the pages, right? So he said to me, that's verse number 143. And Surah Baqarah is 286 verses. So if you were to divide 286 by, if you were to divide it, what would you get? You get 143. So that verse is actually in the middle of the surah. The verse that says, we are the moderate middle ummah. Now, what I want to do is just talk about four or five areas where we fail to understand Islam properly. Number one is the idea that if we take the hardest way possible, that's the best. If we take the most difficult situation, if we take any situation, and we take the most difficult way to approach it, somehow that makes us on the truth. And that's rooted in insecurity. Insecurity either because maybe we're recent to America, insecurity because maybe we're converts, insecurity maybe because we're young, insecurity because maybe we haven't dealt with the outside world. Khawf, yani. And that's why we have a qa'ida and ifta. Al mufti la yajuzul an yufti wa huwa khaif. It's not allowed for a mufti to give a fatwa and he's in a state of fear. Because he may not answer the question sincerely. But it will be rooted in fear, and fear is a great lobbyer. The greatest lobbyist is fear. So oftentimes we'll find Muslims, they'll take like the hardest positions. And what happens is they end up pushing people away. Sometimes they'll be absolutely irrational. And if you ask them why, they say, well, this must be aqrab ila al-haqq, yani, aqrab min al-haqq. This must be like the closest to the truth. Why? Ihtiyatan, because it's hard. Let's look at the Prophet Sallallahu and see if that plays out. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Lawla ala ummati. If it wasn't that I wasn't concerned for my community, I would order them to make siwak at every salah. You know, if it wasn't that I was fearful that they couldn't handle it, I would order them to pray, to make siwak, to brush their teeth before every prayer. Commenting on this, the ulama said, to, to use miswak is mustahab, mentioned by Imam Ibn Hajr and Fathul Bari. But the Prophet ﷺ knows that that hardship may actually undermine the recommended nature of miswak and cause people to feel burdened in religion and to push them away from religion. So he eases it for them. The question is, would it be harder to make miswak every time or not? Which one? What do you think? It's harder to make siwak every time, but the Prophet gives the easy answer. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tarawih. He used to make tarawih with the community. He used to come outside, pray tarawih. His house is next to the masjid, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then he stopped. And Al Qadi Iyad, the great Maliki jurist, in his explanation of Sahih Muslim. He said that the Prophet ﷺ, he stopped fearing that his community may assume that tarawih is fars. Which one is harder? For him to pray tarawih every time 
or to leave it? Which one? Which one? Did he take the harder position or the easier position? The easier position. The third, in the community, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Unfortunately, I received a phone call from Los Angeles two days ago about a woman who walked in a mosque, a Russian woman, who walked in a mosque with shorts on and said, I want to learn about Islam. I saw a Muslim man praying at my job and I was overcome with a sense of peace. And I don't know, she said, I don't believe in, I'm a mulhida, like, like, I don't believe in anything, double negative and all. But when that man prayed, I felt something I've never felt before. And that was the truth. So I'm here to ask about your religion. And what do you think happened? Do you think they served her tea? You think they gave her some dates? Or do they think they had a massive brouhaha about a woman in the mosque with shorts? Which one is more important? Her ultimately coming out of hell into heaven or her going home and putting on some Levi's? Well, wait a minute. Levi's also because it's a tribe that we don't get along with. So she'd have to even change it to a different type of brand of jeans. That will be another discussion in itself. So she'd have to go home a second time and put on some you know, Muslim approved clothing and come to them. I actually received two phone calls in one day from the same community about this woman. I was like, what is your problem, man? She's interested in Islam. She didn't come to you about dress code. A man comes into the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu and uses the restroom in Sahih al-Bukhari. He uses the restroom. And Anas in his riwayah, there's also the riwayah of Abu Huraira, Anas ibn Malik, what does he say? He said, فَزَجَرَهُ nas," Which means people wanted to roll him up. People wanted to take him outside and beat him down. That's really what it means, zajar. They started to bother him. And the Prophet said, فَدَعُوا The Prophet said, leave him alone. And he finished. You know, the fuqaha, they took the, sorry, the usuliyun. They took more than 150 qawaid from this hadith. From this instance about masalih and mafasid and maqasid and things like this. And I remember we, one of our sheikhs, he wrote a poem, 70 of them in one poem, subhanAllah, in Bahr Rajas. Point is, the Prophet let him finish. Did he take the easy opinion or the hard opinion? Which opinion did the Prophet take here? The easy opinion. When the Prophet saw some conquered Mecca, you know the Kaaba is built on the foundations that are not the original foundations of Sayyidina Ibrahim. Qawaid Sayyidina Ibrahim wa Ismaila. It's not. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to Aisha, he said, if it wasn't that your people just became Muslim, if they had not just become Muslim, I will order the Kaaba to be destroyed and built on the foundations of Ibrahim. But they can't handle it. Ahl Mecca. They couldn't handle seeing the Kaaba destroyed. Imam al nawi in his explanation of Sahih Muslim, and this hadith also is related by Malik and the Muatta, he said, here's an example of taking the easier opinion to accomplish a greater good. Here's an example of taking the easier way out instead of the more difficult way. So I've shown you now in three areas, ibadah, Secondly, our community issues. Thirdly, our issues related to the inner community and the outer community. And the last, personal choice. What do you think the Prophet's personal choice was? If he had to go the hard way or the easy way? In the truth. Because see, our, our community is so insecure. When you say easy, that oh, are you saying do haram? Ease and haram aren't the same. Are you saying do evil? Ease and evil aren't the same. They're not synonyms. They're not synonyms. In fact, historically, Muslims were led into evil more so by hyper understandings that were rooted in irrational conservatism than they ever were in assumptions of liberalism, believe it or not. The Khawarij were not liberal people. ISIS is not a liberal organization. These are people who are interpreting Islam letter for letter. Letter for letter. What do you think the Prophet's 
young students of knowledge, especially because I remember in my madrasa days, in my 20s, you know, I would come in the masjid and find a chacha sahib with his pants below his ankle or, you know, some young person not dressed right and I would unleash the fury of hell on them. And don't let me see a sister not dressed right, if I saw a sister, because I felt so comfortable with myself, I had to wall them out of my life because that's how comfortable I was with myself as a man. Sounds weird. So what do you think the prophet's personal convictions were? To go the hard way or the easy way? Some of us were so arrogant, we'll laugh at this because we're to talamad ala sheikh YouTube or Google. You know, we learned from the screen, not from the man. I remember once I traveled to study Sahih Muslim with the sheikh in Cairo. And the train I took broke, and I had to walk almost 10 miles to the village that he was in. I walked until it was hot, right? Until basically my clothes looked like I took a shower. And I got to his house, and the book I was going to read to him was wet from sweat. And he said to me, هذا العلم يؤتى ولا يأتي. He said, this knowledge, you come to it, it doesn't come to you. Abshir, abshir, like good news for you, good news for you. But in this age, the ignorant, arrogant, young, adherent Muslim has forgot what that is because they haven't studied with men or women. They study with screens, and screens always tell you right. They're shiny. They give you nor without having to get the nor from the sheikh, from his heart. The Prophet ﷺ, do you think his personal conviction was to go hard or to go easy in the truth? What do you think? What did his wife Aisha say as we finish? We don't have time to do the other four. Aisha radiallahu anha has said that the Prophet the Prophet would not choose Bukhari between two issues except choose a sarhuma, except he chose the easiest one as long as it was in the truth. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's the first misunderstanding we find amongst the Muslim community that always we have to be hard. Always we have to be harsh. And what that does, it allows us to create a false set of measurements. So if a person isn't dressed in a certain way, we'll say, oh, this person is not a good Muslim. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was asked about the Muslim who lives in the lands of the non-Muslims. How should they dress? He said they should dress like non-Muslims in the halal because they'll bring their hearts closer to them. They'll protect themselves and it will bring opportunities for da'wah for them. Ibn Taymiyyah is a faqih. He's not a literalist. And there are four others, we don't have time uh, to talk about them, but I encourage you, inshallah, after Salat al-Maghrib, uh, to please feel free to ask questions. I'm also going to invite our Sheikh and Imam uh, Ibrahim, who you have as a great gem now uh, in Florida, alhamdulillah, to please also participate, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Just remember that it's not ease that you're looking for, you're looking for the truth. As Allah said, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ مِيُسْرُ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ مَعُسْرُ There's another qira'ah. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ يُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ مُعُسْرَ Another qira'ah وَلُوا تُكَمِّلُوا وَتُكْمِلُوا Another qira'ah and these verses and that's the level of knowledge we need to increase now we need to quit cheerleading our ummah we need to talk to them about things they don't know so that the literacy increases because people think it's easy people think learning is easy you're a shaykh who went to Dioband Wallahi it's not easy I respect him a lot so inshallah afterwards uh, we'll be more than happy to welcome some of your questions. I hope I don't cramp up um, by the second quarter. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just have to keep saying it. It's so funny what happened to your star player. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us champions in the hereafter. Right after the four quarters of this dunya. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَ وَآخِرَ الدَّعْوَانَ الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Allah, 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 Allah.